Hi everyone and welcome to White Source's DevSecOps Virtual Summit. My name is Victoria Eichnein and I will be moderating this webinar. I am pleased to introduce our sixth session of today's summit, which I can personally tell you will be very exciting. Here with me is Willi Peter Schaub, Software Engineer and Director at Ajato Transformations, who will be sharing his personal insights and lessons learned from DevOps transformations he has been involved in. So Willi, without further ado, the stage is yours. Thank you for the introduction, Victoria. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. So my name is Willie Peter Schaub, and I'm here to talk about our learnings from DevOps transformations, which primarily entails breaking down walls between people, process, and products. I was born in Basel, Switzerland, and grew up in sunny Johannesburg, South Africa, and moved to Vancouver, Canada in 2009 to join Microsoft as a senior program manager. In 2018, I returned back to the world of consultancy, helping customers with their DevOps transformation, engineering process, and products. Here are a few pictures showing my interests once I'm unplugged from the digital world. I love to explore our oceans, in particular shipwrecks, caves, and sharks. I am fascinated by aviation and enjoy watching sunsets wherever I am. I'm from the CTOS, DOS, mainframe and Windows 3.1 era. At heart, I have always been a software engineer, switching to the role of program manager when Microsoft went through the Agile and DevOps transformation. Always keen to share my experience, learnings and mentor fellow engineers. I have not been in the roles of project manager, product owner, or release manager, but have collaborated with them as part of people, process, and product improvements. When I refer to we in this session, I refer to a group of fellow agents of chaos, working on DevOps transformations and sharing our exciting journeys in an upcoming book. Brent comes from a disciplined agile and DevOps world. David helps us visualize process and people. And Matthew, known as Mr. Waterfall, is an exceptional scrum master bringing project management and balance to our team. So, what have we learned over the past few years in terms of DevOps transformations? Our recommended approach to get started with your transformation is to do an assessment to compare how you are doing compared with the rest of the industry. Then, and only then, focus on the culture of your people, continuously streamline your process and products, and ensure that you can continuously deliver business value and delight your customers. As you may notice, I'm a visual person and love to summarize concepts and information in quick reference posters. I will share a link to this and other posters, presentations, and other nuggets at the end of the session. Over the past decade, development was spoiled with innovation, experimentation, efforts to embrace agility, lean management, lean development, self-organization, self-management, and continuous delivery. Key performance indicators such as lead time for change and deployment frequency have been improved, delivering smaller feature releases more frequently and continuously. Operations, however, has been less privileged. Although we are making great strides with key performance indicators such as mean time to recovery, and change failure rate, releases are often still viewed as bigger, less frequent super tankers. Can you recognize yourself in this common example? The LifeSite incident phone rings at 2 a.m. in the morning. Operations and site reliability engineers 
sit around a table struggling to understand the context, find the right logs, and remediate the root cause. There is no trace of anyone from the development team. And guess what? After hours of troubleshooting, it becomes clear that the engineers were looking at the wrong logs and made incorrect assumptions of the build that was deployed. We realize that the operational environment is based on stringent processes and approvals to enforce quality. A quick fix is neither possible nor welcome. What follows is a toxic world of context switching, interruptions, queues, escalations, and cost that unfolds before our eyes. A quick fix to remediate the issue and delight our primary stakeholder, the user of our solution, turns into a political and process-driven slog. Eventually, development starts to get engaged and demands more access to operational infrastructure in a futile attempt to fix the issue. In return, operation starts locking down even more, destroying the last traces of collaboration and trust. Ring any bells? It is evident that it is all about people. Cross-functional teams based on the concept of T-shaped skills or T-shaped persons are required. The horizontal bar of the T stands for broad expertise and the ability to collaborate. Both are important to a healthy DevOps mindset. Typical development teams consist of a product owner, a scrum master, and three to nine engineers. However, I prefer to talk about feature teams that have a production-first mindset who are accountable and take responsibility for each feature from ideation to deprecation and continuously collaborate with all stakeholders such as user experience, quality assurance, architects, infrastructure engineers, and release management. One or two engineers should also be committed to bug and incident resolution on a rotational basis. This ensures that the team is continuously addressing bugs, technical debt, raising overall quality, and has skin in the game. When a life site incident occurs, all these stakeholders are accountable and work together as a team to identify the root cause and create a remediation without the burden of process and office politics mentioned before. We need a blameless environment based on accountability, responsibility, and trust. We always find ourselves drawing the triangle of autonomy and alignment on the whiteboard when we engage with new teams to talk about the what, why, how, and when of projects. Self-organization is a natural process that creates order within the team. It outlines how the autonomous team collaborates and coordinates. Self-management defines how the diverse team members work together in their own way, aligned with the what, the why, a shared vision, and governance owned by the leadership. Part of the process is also a development process based on consistent and effective branching, reviews, collaboration, and triggering of the continuous integration and continuous delivery pipelines. Personally, I have a dream of one instrumented pipeline with one build and many deployments for every application. We shift left by running builds unit tests and scan for vulnerabilities using a service such as white source with every potential pull request. We want to detect issues and fail early. This is likely your most challenging and stressful adventure as developers will push back on anything that slows down their builds 
and development process. Even essential scans, such as security scans to identify vulnerabilities, at least until everyone realizes the value of early detection and early failure, or until the organization enforces their technical governance. You probably recognize the comments, we are developers, not testers, and we are paid to write code, not tests. However, it is important to realize that we are all engineers accountable and paid to ship quality code. We shift right by using configuration to deploy environments, quality gates to guard environments, consistent versioning, automated release node generation to give everyone the complete context, and telemetry observation. Progressive exposure using deployment rings and or feature flags allows us to get feedback for new features in production with control over the blast radius of change. Remember, process and products enable people. But ensure that the autonomy is balanced with the alignment of the shared vision and governance. We need to create a culture where it is encouraged to fail early, learn and improve. It is easier to take a step back and reflect than resolve a merge conflict during a 2 a.m. call when you are staring at a branching strategy that looks similar to the tree of life in the Bahrain Desert. Yep, that's me standing in the middle of a desert a long time ago. Also, before you implement feature flags, you need a solid unit test strategy to validate every possible variation of flipping the switches. You also need to understand the implications, dependencies, and maintenance of flags which are owned by business, not development. This means that we actually have to take a couple of steps back and encourage business and our product owners to define smaller features that are loosely coupled. This enables a development process that favors short-lived branches, features that can be embraced by a feature flag, and delivered quicker and continuously. If you try to boil the ocean or pursue an overnight Big Bang transformation, you are in for expensive and unmotivating pain. Let us review a handful of epiphanies from our transformation adventures. First epiphany. Your DevOps journey is about continuously adding value to your business and engineering system. Your DevOps journey will not be something that you do overnight, and it is not a silver bullet. It's one of these destinations that you never quite get to. Epiphany number two. Hypothesis-driven development and progressive exposure can be powerful, but deployment rings and feature flags are not intended to hide code that is not production ready.
Thank you.